let the dogs out. All right, there's dogs barking in the background. Do you hear that? It's perfect timing. Also perfect timing might be that the uh, someone's mowing the grass during this because that's what you get when you're in the middle of the day on a Tuesday in the suburbs, which is where I live. Hi guys, my name is Jamie Migdal and I am the founder and CEO of Fetch Find. I'm also a dog trainer and have been a dog trainer for forever, 20 some years. And dog training, although I now own a company called Fetch Find, which is a tech company, an online platform for learning. Dog training is in my DNA, it's in my core, it's what I love to do and it's what I love to talk to people about and it's what I love to, um, you know, just sort of create change and have an impact on people in their life. And dog training for sure does that for me. And, um, and I'm really excited to be here with you guys on Tuesdays. We started Trainer Tuesdays as a part of Fetch Find for a consumer audience. So not just the professionals that we train, but the folks that have dogs. And by the way, some of those people are professionals. That everyone's home or most people are home or at least have a more limited schedule. Also, so many people are getting dogs. Um, new puppies, rescue dogs, foster programs, the world uh, dogs are, as someone keeps saying, dogs are living their best life, which is amazing. And that is makes my dog loving heart warm. And, um, and it's really, uh, it's what we've always hoped for, that dogs had a lot of, uh, a lot of love and abundance of homes. And these rescue dogs are getting multiple applications. So if it's younger dogs are getting applications, they can't keep these dogs in shelters and fosters. So anyway, if that's you, that's awesome. And you need some help because listen, you can't get to a dog trainer right now. You're home with your dog, working on crate training, working on potty training, working on basic stuff. We decided at Fetch Find that we're here. I'm in my home office. My team is at home. We're dog trainers. Why not give this gift of free dog training? And that's what we're doing. Every Tuesday, 2 o'clock, right here, Trainer Tuesdays with me, Jamie Fetchfind. We'll start to have some guests on. We'll do some other things. There's a dog knocking on the door right now. Do I ignore her or do I let her in? I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll see how persistent she is. That's going to be my training demo dog, Sassy, who will be within a few minutes. So we've so far talked about socialization in our Trainer Tuesday time together. We talked about socialization with my good friend Kelly Elvin. That was a couple weeks ago. Uh, we've done sit and down, which I've heard from so many people that some of the ways that we are training sit and down were actually working and you guys were doing them at home, which is fantastic. So today, it's my drum roll. It's my Facebook Live drum roll. By the way, comments, welcome. Questions, welcome. If we weren't doing that, then this would be like a YouTube deal, but this is instead of Facebook Live deal. So please let me know if you have questions about Bum, ba, da, dum! recall, recall, recall. What is recall? Hmm? Well, recall, most commonly understood is come, the come command. Fido come, Roxy come, Wrigley come. All good, all good. And that is what people typically think about when they think about recall. I am going to challenge us today, my dog trainer self, for the next however long we're together. We're scheduled to go an hour. Maybe we'll go an hour. Maybe we'll go less. We'll do whatever it takes to get the information to you about training your dog on recall. So here's the deal. Recall for most dog trainers is the thing they love and hate most. They love it because it is the number one life-saving tool that you will ever have in your arsenal of being a dog parent or a foster parent or anything. Anyone that, anytime you have a dog in your midst or in your midst, recall is the most important thing. It literally is a life-saving tool. I don't care. I always used to tell my students, and you should know this, and I want you to sort of assimilate this sit down, walking on leash, all of these fancy things. <laughs> yeah, I know walking on leash is fancy for a lot of dogs. And if I'm talking about you, you know what I mean. But all of these other commands or cues, they're all very important for having a well-behaved dog, a good canine citizen, helping you to have guests over, have your kids be involved. All of those other things are super, super important. Hi, Ruth. But recall, my friends, recall is the really only thing that counts. And frankly, everything is based on recall. Because without getting your dog's attention and without being able to pull them away from something that could be dangerous, nothing else really matters. 
And so the reality is that because it is so important and because you really want to have this ingrained as a part of your repertoire with your animal or animals, by the way, you could certainly teach a cat recall and I recommend it, but you can. Uh, it's not about a word. Hi, Deborah. It's not about a word. So people, the old thinking about recall was that you must have a word, come, heel, here, front, side, blah, blah. that's all great. But frankly, your word could be pizza or monkey or iPhone. Actually, don't maybe use iPhone because you may use that too much in your daily talk. But recall, the word that you use for recall is so much less important than the intention, the meaning, the energy, everything behind actually using it. So the habit of creating a good recall is so much more important. And here's the thing. If you decide that you're going to start to work on your recall and you're maybe home with roommates or a partner or a kids or all of those things, then it's going to be really important that everyone's on board. And the reality is that everyone's not going to use your word because everyone's not going to think about it. And most importantly, they're not going to think about it when they really need it. Because here's when you really need your recall. When you're outside, hanging out in your yard, and some Yahoo left the gate open, and then what ends up happening? Out goes dog, everyone freaks out, everyone's wondering, oh my gosh, what word do we use? Is it come? Is it heel? Is it front? Is it name? What is it? You know, it doesn't matter that matters is that everybody in your household practices reinforcing your puppy or your dog to come to them and have it be no big deal. In fact, probably the most important thing that I want you to think about when it comes to recall is that everything that you do impacts recall. Everything. Everything you do impacts recall. So if you call your dog and you reprimand your dog for peeing in the rug or eating your shoe or barking at the door, which is, by the way, something very common. A lot of people will call their dog to them when they're trying to get them to stop doing something, forgetting that you just used up one of your recall tickets. Every time you use a recall, you're using up your, your it's currency. So I'll use my dog's name, Sassy. Sassy, come here. If in that moment, she doesn't make the assumption, she doesn't make that she doesn't pair the fact that I'm calling her with something positive, that she's had experiences with me, that me calling her is going to end with something delicious or favorable or frankly, just not punishment, just something that doesn't upset her or make her uncomfortable. Every time, whether it's I'm trying to get her from barking at the door or I'm trying to get her to come for dinner or I'm trying to get her attention for anything, God forbid that she's running into the street. It matters so much that I've built this into our daily habit that that practicing this, putting it out there in the world for my dogs at all different times, under all dis different circumstances and all different situations, this is actually how you train recall. The formality of recall is just simply that it's a formality. You are training recall in your dog all day long, every day, throughout the day, under all sorts of circumstances. In fact, I would contend that the reason that most dogs have a questionable, if not absolutely absentee recall, is because we forget that that's actually what's happening during the day. And you're a lot of times you're sabotaging your own ability to have a great recall with your dog because you've used it the wrong way at the wrong time. So calling your dog, hey, stop that. Come here. Stop that. That's recall. That's a recall moment. Anything you do to get your dog's attention and expect hope or want them to come towards you when you're calling their name to get their attention, you're just doing recall. And if every time, and by the way, no one is perfect and you're going to call your dog and you're going to yell and you're going to forget to reward and you're going to forget to practice a good habit, that's okay. But if the majority of time you're thinking about the fact that when you do call your dog to you, it's on you. It's on you to do something special, extraordinary, interesting, or frankly, just nice, as opposed to the opposite, which would be the punishment, the yelling, or frankly, even the ignoring. A lot of times people will call their dog and the dog will, oh, yeah, I'm coming your way. Here I am. Here I am. I've recalled. Am I great? Am I awesome? And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on my phone. I've moved on to something different. You lost an opportunity to reinforce. We talked about reinforcement last week. You've lost the opportunity to reinforce a great behavior. 
I mean, you guys, this is a time that we can all learn about behavior and what it means to, you know, get better at something or practice something or create better relationships, create better habits, and everything works um, in the in, with operant conditioning. And I want to get too geeked out. I could, I won't. Yes, Deborah, this will be saved. You can share it with your kids. I don't want to get too geeked out on the idea or the science behind dog training. If you want to call me up, we can talk for a long time. But the reality is that you're working always, you're working with quadrants. There's four quadrants, positive reinforcement, positive punishment, negative reinforcement, negative punishment. And the reality is that everything you do, your dog is responding. You're doing something. Am I getting too sciencey? I am. Okay. Let's dial back. Here's the deal. When your dog comes to you, just say something nice. Look at them. Think of something that makes you smile. And if you happen to have a bag of treats or a pocket full of treats, then, oh, my Lord, you are really, you're killing it. And by the way, no one should be walking around their house all the time with treats because how can you manage that? You've got all these other things to do. You're working from home. You've got kids. Anyway, part of this whole point is that when we talk about dog training, I really want to make sure that you can actually implement it in your house. All right. The whole idea is that dog training isn't just something that is up. It's not, it should, how do I say this? Dog training is not hard. It's not hard and it's something that could easily be implemented into your everyday life. And it doesn't need to be all day long and it doesn't need to be perfect, but it is something that you are capable of. You, as a dog owner, are capable of making massive change in your dog's behavior through just some basic tools of consistency, some equipment that I'm gonna share with you here in a few minutes, and just being as consistent as possible as human beings, because consistency is really hard for us. It's really hard for me. I wish I could be consistent. I start my days out like I'm going to meditate. I'm going to do all these things. I'm going to start my day in this way. And then I get stressed or I get called away or my kid or my this or my what have you. And I've lost track of my commitment to being consistent to myself and my own habits. That's just human nature. And it's something that I work on and then to, and that you work on. And then to throw dog training on top of it, it can feel really overwhelming. Please, please, I beg you, don't be overwhelmed. Always take care of yourself first, right? Like if you're like, I can't even add this dog training thing in. I'm already so overwhelmed with all of the other things I have to do. Then let me make it really easy for you. I'm going to make it so easy. I'm going to break it down for you today so you can just Practice your recall without even realizing that you're practicing it. And frankly, that does come to food. All right, let's talk about some, let's talk about some equipment. Let's talk about some basics. Actually, let's talk about basics. I'm gonna give you a really fun tool. So it's the ABCs of recall. It is literally that. Uh, when we think of recall, we've actually broken this down into an acronym. Um, it is truly an acronym. And if you remember this, well, then you get a gold star. I actually can't remember this. I have to look at my cheat sheet. So have at it. All right. Here are the basics. Here are the essential components of recall. Really, if we're looking at like Jamie cut to the chase, what's the cliff note? I'm going to go ahead and give it to you right now. Um, in a nutshell, R, reward. Rewards must be when you're training for recall, they should be extra special. When you're maintaining recall, they can be a more neutral reward. But when you're training recall, you're trying to get it back, or you're trying to make it stronger, rewards are really important. R for reward must be extra special. E, recall, R-E. E is for encourage. So that means verbally rewarding your dogs as many times as you can throughout the entire recall process. And so what I mean by that, Recall isn't just when they get to you, and I'll show you this when we go outside, which, by the way, I'm going to try something with you guys. I'm going to take you onto my phone. You're on my laptop now, and we're going to go outside into my yard with my dog and practice this because I want you to see it. Recall is not an academic pursuit. It's a, it's a visual, tactile. It's a pursuit that requires many components of learning, so I'll show this to you, but I do want to point one thing out. So, like, here, here's the thing. People think recall is only at the end, so... Fido, come. Do, 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 do. Are you here yet? Come on, dude. What's up? Oh, you're here. Good job. Okay. In that moment between Fido hearing whatever it is, whatever word you're using to Fido actually being in your recall, sort of in your perimeter, um, you're missing out or you have, I shall say, you have great opportunity to encourage the entire time. I'm going to have a handout for you at the end, a downloadable handout that will talk exactly about breaking the recall into different pieces. It has a lot of intermediate steps. It's everything from 
And these are rewardable, encouraging steps that dogs will take that you have an opportunity to do something about, to impact them while they're doing it. So I'll just, I'm gonna go ahead and be a dog for a minute. Okay, here we go. So go ahead and say, Jamie, come. <laughs> that right there, behavior number one. That's a reinforceable, that, that's a moment of encouragement. Just getting your dog's attention, meaningful time, meaningful moment, Lots of lots of verbal praise, encouragement, getting them excited, knowing that you guys have that connection. When you recall, connection is the most important piece. Recall is all about having a, an off-leash connection with your dog. And there's no, there's nothing that makes a relationship stronger than a really good recall. All right. So so I've turned my head and now I'm gonna start taking my first steps towards you. Maybe I'm going to walk this way a little bit or that way a little bit, or maybe I'm going to do bow and arrow straight line at you. Any movement, any steps, anything that your dog does to make their way towards you in any, any semblance of a perfect line, zigzag, what have you, encouraging moment available. There's your encourage. You can encourage right there. You can whistle, you can laugh, you can sing, you can dance. Whatever you're gonna do, make it fun, which is a big part of training anyway, making it fun and making it so your dog knows that they're doing the right thing the entire, the entire way, the entire process. So, all right, next, next is from encourage, we go to C, which is, look, I'm looking at my notes. I really am. Communication. So communication is about canine body language. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of like mysteries around canine body language, and there's a lot of hacks a lot of secret decoder moments, but the reality is that dogs, and here's my, here's the big takeaway, and this will be in the handout. All right, so when you and I meet, which is weird because we're not meeting, but we're sort of together. If I were in the same room with you right now, I would walk up to you or you would walk up to me and pre-COVID, we would potentially shake hands or hug. That's a ventral, ventral relationship, meaning that that's a heart-to-heart -heart engagement. So human beings, when we meet each other, we're good to come, we're, we're good with eye contact. We're encouraged to have eye contact. We're encouraged to touch again. Okay. We're encouraged to touch and we're encouraged to be in a linear position. Dogs, dogs, not so much. In fact, direct eye contact and a direct Present, a direct presentation of yourself to your dog is actually um, can create some stress in your dog because if you watch dogs play, you never ever see two dogs coming at each other directly on. What you end up seeing is you see them doing this sort of dance where they reach each other and maybe they sniff a butt or they turn around or they walk away and then they come back. Two dogs that are headed toward each other like humans do, ventral, ventral, heart to heart, that typically ends in something that is not, not what we want. There's, uh, there's, there's gonna be not such a great outcome because that's a very threatening thing for dogs to do to each other and it's very threatening when we do it to our dogs. So one of the things that I'll teach you when we go outside it's how to use your body and that using your body is almost as important, if not more important than anything that you'll say verbally. It's how you present yourself to your dog. It's how you present your energy, your body, your eyes, your front, your sides, how tall you are, how you use your body to get closer to the ground. These are really, these are the secret hacks of recall and they are, they're secret hacks. Everyone gets so caught up in the traditional Fido come that they forget that there's so many other things that are happening. And those are the things that actually reinforce a recall. Communication is such an important part of this. Um, I can't say this enough. And again, I will demo all of this for you when we go outside in a few minutes. All right, the next thing is L for uh, lots. <laughs> <laughs> lots of praise. I've already said this, but I wanna say it again since we're acronyming our butts off today. L, first L is for lots of praise. You really cannot do enough praising. I mean, you can, and people might think you're a crazy person, depending on where you are, what you're doing, and who you're with. But generally speaking, if you're training a recall, praise at a normal tone, normal volume, and uh, normal cadence is going to be a good thing. Also, being crazy is also not a good thing. Oh, my God! This sort of thing, I've seen people take it to the highest level because they think that's what encouragement looks like for a dog. No, just, you know, hey, watch, I'll do it for you right now. 
Hey, good job, good job, good job. That was probably even like maybe like one degree too much, but it's that. And in fact, it was. I'm going to watch this back if I ever do and think to myself, what kind of foolish, what the hell is that? This is really what it looks like. Let me do this again. Hey, good job, good job. All right, good job. So it's also really trying to keep a nice upbeat tone, flat, and don't be perfect. Like, don't worry about being perfect. Like, you'll be all over the place with your praise, and I'll do it out there. And I'm gonna have, we're gonna play some games with the recall, and you'll see us sort of going across the board with voice tones and words and making mistakes, lots of mistakes. But no matter how many mistakes you make, it's okay because if you're using the lots of praise, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Mistakes can be eradicated pretty quickly and turned around. And the last thing, which then I'll go into equipment. The last L is for anyone. Anyone, what are you thinking right now? Let me hear some guesses. Some te oh, telepath, telepathy, telepathy, <laughs> telepathic guess. All right. If you said love, no. I mean, I'd love for it to be love. It's not love, though. Not for the ABCs of recall. Any other L's? Lame, sure. Sometimes this feels lame, but it's not. No, actually what it is. Do you love I have a show and tell for you? It's leash. Okay, so leash is absolutely, unequivocally, the most important tool that you will use with your treats in training a recall. Now, if you're just practicing a recall on a dog that already knows it, but now you're just kind of upping your practice game, the leash is not as important. And also you're using your lead. By the way, this isn't for safety. Let me say something. This leash is not for safety. It's to back up. Oh, what was the A again? Hold on. I'll help you. Oh, love, look. Oh, you guys are awesome. Uh, the A was um, always good, by the way. The A was always good, Jessica. Um, you already forgotten the E, the C, and the A. Okay, that's awesome. I'm going to go through them again. I love that you... <laughs> I forgot them too, but that's the whole point. I forgot them. So how can you remember? Leash. Let's get back to leash and then I'll go through all of them again. Leash is to reinforce what you're teaching because what you don't want to do is practice your recall, get in a really good, get a really good beak and a good grind. And then what you end up having is your dog um, walking this way. The leash is to help bring them back to you while you're in the middle of practicing your recall. It's not to correct them. Please understand, this is not a backup correction. This is a guide. This is a, um, a, a what do you call it? It's like a life vest? No, it's like, um, I don't know what the good analogy would be for this situation. Having the leash sort of just reinforces and backs up what you're asking them to do. Because what we don't want to see happen is that you practice your recall and then they stop recalling because maybe you've over-practiced, which happens, and then you get frustrated and then you've ended your recall process or your recall training on a bad note. And so the leash just helps you to sort of structure. You can use it to bring them in. You can use it for physical prompts and encouragement. We never use it for correction. Okay, I just wanna make sure I say that. So all right, I have this handout for you and I'll get it to you. But R, reward, E, encourage, C, communication, A, always good, L, lots of praise, and L leash, although I do love love and look. Becky and Linda, nice thinking. All right, let's talk about equipment. Let's talk about equipment and recall, and then we're gonna go outside soon. The guy was mowing the lawn and he has stopped. I'm gonna drink some water. This is hard work. No, it's not. Mm. I am thirsty. Okay, so I have some basic tools for recall. Now, again, in your backyard, a dog who already knows recall that you're just practicing, um, you know, you're just practicing for the heck of it. You don't really need to have all these tools. This is if you're going out to train, to reinforce, to really build a good repertoire for, for recall. Don, Jamie, help me train my rescue on an emergency recall that saved my dog's life more than once. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. So um, I love that a lot of my old students are on, on this feed. This is like, oh my God, I love my life as a dog trainer. My life as a tech entrepreneur is very different than my life as a dog trainer. Uh, all right, that's for another Facebook Live. Anyhow, um, so 
And that's not, a, it's not a bad thing. It's just very different. And I love this feedback. Um, emergency recall. Thanks, Don, for bringing that up. Is something different. We're not going to do emergency recall today. Emergency recall is your one word that only you know that you use only in an emergency. Um, maybe I'll do another session. Maybe we'll do another segment on emergency recall because it is a light. It is truly the, it's that goal. It's the thing you never hope that you have to use because if you have to use it, that means your dog is in grave danger. Um, and it's a word that we condition very much. We actually have taught a class called, um, we actually taught a class called emergency recall. We spent six or eight weeks just reinforcing that one emergency word that you would never use. And you don't tell anyone the word either, because if you do, they'll ruin it for you. And you've got to start all over. I love, and then we, you have to pick a word that you would never use. And, and actually I was using the example of some, some ones chose pizza. Monkey is in my head. I can't remember. I can't remember. Um, Don, what was your word? Um, Whatever the word is, you pick the word and that's what we reinforce. And you can actually extrapolate from what you're learning here today and hopefully some takeaways. You know, maybe what I'll do is I'll, I think I have an emergency recall handout. If I do, I'll include that in some of the downloads. Is that cool? Right on? Okay, good. Okay, let's get back to equipment. So first things first, um, this is a bait bag. This is a really old bait bag. Um, this is by Howard Hound. By the way, there's no like affiliate links, nothing like this. FYI, this is just stuff that I like and use. And I think that this company is still in business. I've had this Howard Hound bait bag for, I don't know, 10 years probably. So here's what a bait bag is. And you do need a bait bag, by the way. And you can even use, listen, you can use a fanny pack. You can use, I've seen some people, it's janky, but you can do it. You can put a Ziploc bag through your belt with a hole in it and put the treats in there. You can do what you want, but you do want to have hands-free which is why a bait bag or a fanny pack is really great. Hands-free, something where you can grab your treats. Um, we talked about treats a little bit last time. So treats are um, essential. Uh, you know, listen, if you're a person who's like, oh, Jamie, treats, eh, I don't want to use treats, then I'm definitely not the dog trainer for you, for sure. Hopefully you can take some things away and maybe you can, you can put the word reward, in, I'm sorry, verbal reward or chewy, uh, a squeaky toy for treats. But honestly, I think that treats, especially for recall, are an essential component to training a good recall. So uh, we won't get into, you know, all of the dog training drama and politics around all of those things. Next week, I'm going to be talking about leash walking. And I am going to talk about all of the different kinds of collars. And we'll get into it a little bit. But for today, it's happy. Zeus, one of my very favorite treat companies. Um, they've been around for, I don't know, 20 years. They're from Durango, I think, Colorado. Yes, Durango. So these are fab. This is why they're fab, because they're tiny, okay? And they're incredibly stinky. Like, oh, my God, they're really gross. I mean, they're nasty. But here, here's one treat. It is, I don't know how big this is. You can see it according to my palm. Let's see how many pieces I can make from this one treat. Now, obviously, if you have a giant Great Dane, this is fine. If you have a small Chihuahua, like my girl, that is not fun. So I can take this one piece of zoo because I want to show you what I can do. I'm going to just dismantle it. I'm going to just make this piece of treat my, my. All right. Check that out. Now it's a little dusty. I went probably a little too far. I got aggressive with the treat. I got really aggressive. I got really aggressive. But really this is one, two, three, four, Five. I just got five little reward moments out of one Zook's soft nugget. So listen, you'll do what you want with this. Obviously, the hungrier the dog, the more you'll be able to train. That is just the uh, facts of life, my friends. Facts of dog training life. A hungry dog is an easier to train dog. So Zook's soft. I love them. I think they smell disgusting. Um, soft treat. Another soft treat example is by a company that I also really like. Merrick. And by the way, I'm not going to include on food and treats. I just like, I think that there are some companies that just have a nice offering of edibles and uh, and they make it so it's easy to train with. So the reason I like these guys, you can see the shape. Let me show you the shape. These are um, Merrick Bat Country and these are Heroes Banquet. So these, um, I think part of the proceeds go to a company or I think all canines for warriors. So it's a you know veteran uh, organization that helps veterans with, um, 
with PTSD and dogs. Anyhow, so this is nice because it's got, and I'm getting really, really detailed. So sorry if this is boring, um, but I think that these are the important pieces that no one takes the time to really think through or discuss. So I'm just going to do it. So hopefully, you know, hopefully you'll get something out of this. I like this because look what I can do. This is our, like a pre-made break them up treat. So in this one treat, if I really wanted to, sorry about that fishbowl sound. That's the sound I think I may have told you last time. Every half hour, I get that little thing saying a half hour of your life just went by. Um, that actually helps me mark keeping track of my time. So that one treat turned into five treats. So that way, if I want to do a jackpot, meaning I want to give a whole bunch of treats for a really good behavior, I can do a handful or I can break them up into small pieces. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our treats. I feel like Julia Child. I don't think Julia Child would ever use dog treats in anything she does, but there's something about like this. You can't see down here, but I've got these treats and I've got my bag and I'm going to put them in. So I'm going to fill my bag up, I'm taking some zoops. Last night, um, my dog, Sassy, I found her on my desk. I'm sitting at my desk right now. I found her on my desk and I found her off of my desk with the entire bag of treats in her mouth. Silly, silly, Sassy. It's one food motivated creature. Wait, what kind of dogs do you guys have? I don't know. Um, I really want to know. Send me pictures. Post pictures. I want to know what kind of dogs you have. Okay. All right. Um, bait bag. All right. Next thing um, is, I already mentioned it, but I'm going to show you what it is. It's a long line. Um, so, listen, people will sometimes use, instead of a long line, they'll make them up. So, they'll get like a string or <coughs> perhaps a rope, something. You can do that. I never talk about doing that because I don't think it's a stable. I mean, this is a, listen, this is a like actual equipment. This is made for dog training. It's got solid hardware that I know is going to, or should at least, I'll test it before I use it. Of course, it's got solid hardware that's going to work. If I use like a string or a piece of rope or something where I'm going to have to do some of my own not making, not being a sailor, I certainly cannot count to anything that I would do around a knot. I can, however, as a dog trainer and a person who knows how to use certain basic tools can know I can count on this. So this is the, this is a long line. The other tool that we'll talk about next week, but I do want to just show it to you and just, I know if any dog trainers are watching this, they're going to open their eyes wide and say, I can't believe that she's pulling that out. I am. This is a, Flexilege. I'm not sure if this is the same brand. I don't know what brand this is. It doesn't really matter. But the idea is that these are retractable leashes. So they go as far as they go. And then you can lock them. You can unlock them. They come back in. These are death. <laughs> these I have literally from 1994. I have a scar on my leg from the burn of the, re of, of the retractable leash. Truly. I have friends that have cuts all over their arms, my dog walking friends, all of my dog professional friends have like, just like, just, they've been maimed by these guys, maimed. That said, there's only one time I would ever think about using this. That's not true. And we'll talk about this next week. There are other reasons to use this, which we won't get into right now. But there's only one real reason that this, there's one place that this works, which is in training recall, because you can get some distance. All right, you can get some nice distance and you can actually do a little bit of control. It's not as good at you cut both of my wrists because of that leash. Never, never used. Totally. But I have seen it, especially with small dogs. I've seen it used successfully. Maybe I'll try it with Sassy when you go in the backyard. So this is your uh, retractable leash. Okay, here's what's going to happen now, my friends. All right, we're going to go outside. It is 2.30. We are halfway through. Let's see how long we're going to go. I'm going to do something I have not done before. So I need you to hang in with me a second. I'm going to do something. I'm going to take myself off of this. I'm going to put myself on my phone and take my phone outside because I want to show you. By the way, this is where the demos are going to start. I'm going to show you everything we just talked about. If you already have what you need, thank you for watching. It was awesome to be with you. Uh, you know, come back for the downloads, all that stuff. But if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to go ahead and switch on to my handy dandy iPhone bring you outside with me into my backyard with my dogs and my equipment. And I'm going to show you. So let's, let's see how this is going to work. You all going to do this with me. All right, here we go. All right. I'm going to jump off of here and I'll see you in a minute. All right. I'm going to see you in a minute. All right. 
Here we go. Bye. Okay, here we are. Hi. All right, that worked. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna get myself together. I'm gonna put you on a um, like a stand. Here, I'm gonna clean off my screen too. Give me a second here. This is super dirty. All right, and I also cannot see questions right now, so I apologize for that. But I'm gonna go ahead and put you in here. We're gonna go together like a little team. I'm gonna turn you this way. Look at this. Hi. Okay, let me get my stuff. We go outside together. We get my bait bag. We get my long line. I'll bring my retractable leash. I'm gonna go outside. All right, you're gonna see a little. Uh, I'm gonna go through my house. Wow, if you're still watching. You are a rock star. All right, ready? Where am I looking? Oh, there you are. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, is my dog training helper available? Here we go. Will you please put Sassy on leash and come outside with me? All right. So Sadie's gonna grab Sassy. Okay, here we go. All right. All right, so of course someone is mowing the lawn. This is this could be a disaster. Aren't you awesome for sticking with me? All right, here, go put her leash on, please. Okay, she's getting her shoes on. You guys, I told you. I can tell you that this was going to be, this is not going to be, you know. Oh, look at my door. That's artwork for my daughter who um, who is homeschooling right now. And we just keep on putting new artwork on the door. Again, if you're still here, you are awesome. All right, here we go. We've got a kid who's putting her shoes on. We've got a bunch of equipment. And we have you and me, and we are going outside. All right, here we go. There's mowing across the street, but I think they'll be quiet in the backyard. All right, here we go. It won't. Oh, hopefully it will be. All right, here we go. All right. All right. Actually, we put Mindy in. All right, guys, we're outside. All right, my other dog's coming. That was not really meant to be. But we're gonna do it okay oh it's beautiful i live in chicago it's a gorgeous day so here we go that's okay all right here we go hopefully you guys can hear okay we're gonna go ahead and practice some recall now we're gonna put our work to the test um okay so first things first we are going to put our bag on. I'm in shadow. Well, what are you going to do? Everything is perfect on Facebook Live. I'm going to tuck my little bait bag into my pants. All right. I'm wearing some joggers, really comfy. Let's put you somewhere better. <coughs> All right. How's that? I think that'll work. All right. Here we go. Okay. So. I'm going to aim this down a little bit, and we're going to start with. So first things first is I'm just going to be. We're going to first talk about body language. Give me one second. We're going to talk about body language. Here I am down here. I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm coming down close. And I'm going to reward just for doing that. Okay. So now I'm going to do another thing where I'm going to walk around, walk around. Good girl. Good girl. And here, give her a treat. Here we go. I'm not saying anything other than just walk around. Yeah, this is really exciting, isn't it, everybody? All right, she's over here. At this level, having your dog come to you is a recall. Go walking here this way, this tension. Now we're gonna make it a little bit harder to use two people. So, Sadie, we're gonna put you in the middle. <laughs> I'm gonna give you some tips. She's gonna stand over there. Okay. So I get a retreat. Now it's my turn. Sassy! <laughs> 
forgot one thing. The leash. This is why good girl. Good girl. So she didn't come to me at first, so I need to use that leash to reinforce. Go ahead and give her a treat. Good girl. I need more. Jesse. Hey, you're a good girl. So back and forth, back and forth. They're not ready to take them. 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 It's my kid, my dog on a leash, some treats. My dog is here having a complete freak out right now that she's not part of this. But here's about this. But you know what's great? A little competition the world go around. Watch this, everybody. Watch this. Watch this. Are you ready? Okay, let's um. So here, I don't think that this is working. A little glitchy. <laughs> Thanks, Melanie. It's a little glitchy. It's not working awesome because I'm outside. I guess I, I thought maybe it'd be better. So I'm going to walk around and talk to you for a few more minutes. Sassy and Sadie will practice doing recall. Go ahead. You go ahead and keep calling her. You Hi, take me. my bait bag and you go for it. Okay. All right. So the whole point is that being outside with your dog, taking some time to do exactly what she's doing right now. Can you say you stand up and walk around? Okay. Oh, what is this? Go ahead. It's a treat. Go ahead. Walk around. Okay, get down and call her. Okay. I mean, I mean, yeah, she's had some recall training, but I'll tell you what, we've never done it so formally. Look at this. So this is recall. Honestly, this is just, this is it. This is it. It's calling your dog. Let me see if I can flip this guy here we go there we go i need to tie this around no you can just hold it in your hand it's all right you're doing great walk over there and do it again have her follow you so here we go that's it that's it that's recall one more time one more time for the people sadie rose i don't think she'll need lunch either Quick, there you go. And now, Sadie, next time, so that was great that she came to you. Next time, you can take a few steps backwards and encourage her to follow you. So let's get her to, so now walk away. Walk away. Walk away. Keep going. Keep going. Go ahead. Okay. Get down. Look at that. Okay. Walk, walk backwards. Walk backwards. Walk backwards. Walk backwards. Bring her to you. Make some sounds. Recall, talk to her. There you go. So here's the thing. You can pick up your recall anytime, anywhere. Soft, interesting sounds, high-pitched sounds. That was beautiful. All right. All right. On that note, on that note, we're going to go ahead and end our tutorial here for recall. I'll give you guys lots of handouts. If you have questions, you can email me. Uh, you can text me. You can add, actually, you know what? Add the questions here. That way I'll see them right away. And I'm going to go ahead back into my office, and I'll start to answer questions if you have them. Um, I'm so happy to be able to do this with you. Uh, this is just such a beautiful way to spend some of this really challenging time that we all are going through right now. Uh, this is a light in my life to be able to talk about and share dog training with a bunch of beautiful people. Thanks for taking me into your home today. And hopefully this was helpful to you, whether you're a new dog owner, you're a veteran dog owner, or you just want to, you know, be with your dog. There she is. Look at this old girl. And um, next week, sorry, next week, uh, 2 p.m., we're going to do leash walking and talk about equipment, how to walk dogs on leash, what kind of equipment to use for different age dogs, and also how to incorporate your recall into your leash walking. That's a dead hint for you, or that's a giveaway, dead giveaway. Recall is the basis for leash walking. Okay, on that note, you guys, thank you so much. I'm Jamie Migdahl, CEO and founder of Fetch Fine, dog trainer, dog lover, people lover, the whole thing, beautiful day lover. Have a good one. I'll see you next week. Thanks.